Hey everybody, Daniel wanted to do a little bit of a recap of a card show that I went to yesterday and talk about a couple of things that came up there. Uh, this was the East Valley Sports Card Show, I believe is what it's called. It was in Mesa, Arizona. So a bit of a trek for me, uh, probably took me about, I don't know, a good 45 minutes with light traffic on a Sunday morning. I think I got there probably around 9.30, show opened at 9. Um, very small, okay? I had never been to this show before, so um, pretty small, one fairly small room compared to what I'm used to for card shows anyways, you know. Um, I would say there was probably, let me just kind of count in my head, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 dealers. Um, some of the dealers had multiple tables, okay? But uh, probably, let's say 10 dealers, um, Yeah, so I was somewhat disappointed. I had never been to this particular show before. I'd seen it uh, advertised on Facebook and uh, decided that I could kind of combine a couple of other errands out that way and make it work. But uh, I did talk to several of the dealers, uh, one, of those also being the show promoter. And I will say that, you know, everybody that I had a conversation with was very nice. Um, so that was, that was nice. Um, one dealer that I bought some stuff from, nothing was priced. Okay. So he had some boxes and, you know, just, um, and he had some cards laid out, but nothing was priced. And so, you know, not a fan of that, but I did take a chance and kind of asked him about uh, some boxes that, especially this one that seemed pretty random. Um, it had some screw downs in it, which kind of, that always catches my eye. Um, you know, what people at one time put in screw downs and, and things like that. And, um, you know, then has a, has not been moved over to other forms of card storage. Uh, so luckily, you know, this particular box that I asked about, he was like, oh, you know, that's, that's uh, probably somewhere, you know, probably about a quarter a piece is kind of what he ended up on. You know, uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to go through stuff, but yeah, that, pro that stuff's probably about a quarter a piece. Okay, all right, so at a quarter a piece, I'm a, I'm a buyer on some of these things. Uh, just, again, because somebody at one point took, a, took the opportunity to put these in a screw down, and so I like that. So let's start off, show some cards. You got an 88 Donruss, the Rookies, Jay Buhner. All right. So a little closer, closer of a look at this card. This is a, a card that uh, I was not familiar with. So I know about the rookies, the Donruss, the rookies, but uh, I guess I don't have the 88 Donruss set and uh, was just not familiar with this J. Campbell Buner card. Uh, obviously, I did know that he came up with the Yankees before going to the Mariners, but again, not a card that I was familiar with. <clears throat> Another Jay Buhner card. There was, you're going to see some Jay Buhner stuff here, um, and all of it in screw downs. Um, 1988 tops traded. Jay Buhner. 
Jay's favorite entertainers are actors John Wayne and Chuck Norris and NBA superstar Dominique Wilkins. So, and this is interesting. I guess I didn't know this. Jay was traded by the Pirates to the Yankees with Dale Barrow and Alonso Polito in exchange for Tim Foley, Steve Kemp, and $800,000 December 20th, 1984. So here I was thinking he came up with the Yankees when actually came up with the Pirates organization and then Traded to the Yankees. All right. Next up, a 1989 Donruss. And this is not the regular Donruss. So I don't know. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure if this was a, you know, like a traded or update or whatever this was, but not the base 89 Donruss. But anyway, somebody thought it was screw down worthy at one point. All right, let's see next up. And I've got to do some research on these. So Pinnacle Mint Collection. Uh, this particular one does have the J. Buner coin in the card. So this is number 30 of 30. And I know, you know, I, again, I, I know that there's were packs um, I think you would get one coin and it was kind of, it was in the pack, but it was kind of inserted into this plastic holder, you know, so it wasn't going to just move around. Um, and then you would get some of the, a couple of cards that have the hole in it. Again, looks like it's a 30 card set. I'll need to do a little bit more research because while that's a card, you know, I, I'm familiar with card and coin, uh, this is obviously, you know, along the same lines, but, but different. And so I got to figure out, you know, what, what is this? What parallel is this? Um, you know, it's 30 of 30 as well. It's the same card, but it doesn't have the hole. In place of the hole, it has a Seattle Mariners logo. Um, you've got the Duflex technology on the card. So it's got a, kind of a cool shine to it. So if anybody knows a little bit about those feel free to leave it in the comments next up a tops finest sterling j buner oh. and you know i think this is just a, a common version but again somebody loved j buner So that made it into a screw down. All right, more Jay Buhner. This is a probably like 96, 97. I don't know, that's too small for me to read right now. It says in 96, so I'm assuming this is probably 97. 97 Collector's Choice Premier Power Jay Buhner. So, Buner was one of those guys where, you know, he was kind of overshadowed by his Seattle teammates, right? You had Griffey, you had Edgar Martinez, you had Randy Johnson, then you had Alex Rodriguez. And so, 
you know, a very good player, but didn't always get the hobby love that uh, those other guys did. But obviously somebody had some hobby love for Jay Buhner. All right. Next up, and I think this is the last Jay Buhner, is this SPX, probably, I think it's 96. All right. And check this out. I, I did find this interesting on the back. Jay, who set a club record with 121 RBI in 95, was again leading the Mariners in homers and RBI in the first half of 96. So again, you're talking about a team that had Ken Griffey Jr. on it, and he had the club record for RBI and was leading the team in homers and RBI in the first half of 96. So again, uh, I think underrated due to some of his teammates. You know, very cool J. Buner card there. There was actually like three of those, and they were all in uh, screw downs and things, and I decided I did not need three of, of the same cards. So, all right. Next up, we're going to move to a different player. Still in screw down, though. Ken Caminiti, EX2000. I mean, these are cool cards. They're kind of translucent here. You can see behind. Um, but, you know, not particularly valuable. Kind of along the lines of here. It's a high-end product, but it's just kind of a, a base card. But somebody liked Ken Caminiti. Again, great player. Kind of tragic what happened there. Uh, you have this 88 Fleer. Um, to be honest, I'm assuming it's a rookie. I can't think of any 87 Ken Caminiti. So I'm assuming this is a rookie card that made its way into Screwdown. Ken came up with the Astros and then moved to the Padres later on. All right. And the third and final Ken Caminiti. Just a uh, Topps Chrome. It's not a refractor or anything like that, but uh, you know, a 96 Topps Chrome. So I love it that, again, somebody enjoyed Jay Buhner cards, Ken Caminiti cards, so much that they were put with care into these screw down cases. All right, let's go. So a couple more. This is a, uh, a different player, right? Jose Cruz Jr. Remember him being a big deal when he was coming up. And overall, a, a great player, but, you know, didn't quite live up to all the hype surrounding him, especially in the hobby. But nice card there. Okay. And one other Jose Cruz of Bowman's Best. Um, you know, not sure if this is a rookie card or not. I think this is a, what, probably 97. So this might be, I think, uh, this could be a, a rookie card. Because I think the rookie card of him that I'm most familiar with is the 97 Bowman, I think. So maybe, and maybe I'm off. This could be 98, I don't know, but. All right, and then the last card in a screw down, 
I actually thought this was a Greg Maddox card when I was just kind of quickly going through the cards and, and separated it out. But turns out it's Neagle, Denny Neagle. So, um, I remember Neagle, I mean, yeah, he had a, a great 97 where he was 20 and 5 with a 2.97 ERA. So, he had a, definitely had a great year that first year with, I think it was first year, right? No, second year with the Braves. But uh, anyways, all right. So two other cards not in Screwdowns that I got from, well, all right, let me take that back. Here's another card. This was also in that box. So a lot of, you know, early to mid 90s type stuff. And then you had some newer stuff. And I, I do collect Griffey and knew I didn't have this one. So grab that for a quarter. And then, uh, like I said, uh, not two different cards because I got this for a buck and it's you know more than just a card. Uh, you know, I think this is 1990 classic. I'm not even sure if I have this sad or not, but for a buck, I, I, or sorry, for a quarter, I had to grab it. Um, my only fear is that I know some of the classic sets would come like with two of these, you know, they come in that kind of like junky plastic bulky thing. And there'd be like pack here and then a pack here um so i don't know if this is a complete set or a partial set um i'll have to i'm gonna bust it open and go through it you know you've got chipper jones here don mattingly looks like you have nolan ryan and i think that's his son reed ryan and then frank viola so kind of a cool 1990 chipper jones card just talked about chipper in a in a recent video um, how he was the number one draft pick in 1990 because Todd Van Poppel said he was going to going to college um, so there's Larry Wayne Jones or better known as Chipper Jones um, so the the one other thing that I purchased at the card show um, let me see if I can just kind of get some of these out of the way, uh, was a graded card. Um, uh, I don't do a lot of graded, but okay, so kind of made my way quickly through the 10 dealers and um, I saw this card not graded on one of the tables and I picked it up and it, it was not priced at least on the front I picked it up turned it over and it had a sticker on the back that said 150 and I was like I quickly put it down um, it was not in good shape. I mean, it wasn't in horrible shape, but it wasn't in good shape. Um, as I was putting it down, the dealer said, yeah, all my stuff is priced at high Beckett, and then we can kind of negotiate from there. And, uh, you know, that was a, I don't know if I want to say red flag, but not something that I wanted to deal with. Okay. Um, so... I guess kind of, you know, seeing that card and, and having some interest in it. And then at a different dealer's table, I saw this one, which is, you know, it's a 4.5. But to me, I mean, the card looks great. Again, I don't do a lot of vintage, though. 
but card looks great and he had a price tag that was significantly less um it, it was priced at $45 so a graded 1961 tops billy williams rookie card it's sgc it's a 4.5 at $45 compared to a raw, you know, not in as good of condition. Same card where he's got it starting at 150 I, you know. Anyways, I, I think that first experience probably resulted in me showing some interest in this particular card and I ended up getting it I I offered 40 and he accepted right away um so I got this for 40 <clears throat> I couldn't remember though if I already had this card or not um so I think Ron Santo has his rookie card also in the 61 top set. And I felt like I had one of the two, but I couldn't remember. Um, turns out I did have the Billy Williams. So that's why I need to be better organized and have kind of some lists and things like that. But Obviously, you can see, you know, this is an upgrade. Again, to me, that's not necessarily important. Um, I'm more the card over the condition. <clears throat> but um, I do think it looks nice in the SGC holder. Um, I don't think this is a, a really bad version of the card either. Uh, centering is nice. Uh, it's got some, you know, it's got some surface issues for sure. Um, and the corners are, you know, a bit rounded on the bottom, especially, and, and they're, they're soft. I mean, it's, <clears throat> you know, but uh, it's a nice card, so I got to figure out what to do with this extra Billy Williams. So we shall see. Um, one last thought on from my trip to the card show yesterday. Again, it has to deal with these cards and screw downs. Now my whole life, as I've put cards into screw downs or now magnetics that are similar, uh, I have always put the card like this with the either the screw or the magnetic up at the top but I'm you know as I come across other collectors I'm seeing some that put it with the screw or the magnetic down so what what do you do screw or magnetic down or screw or magnetic up so let me know if you made it all the way to the end of the video and you answer this question, you get bonus points um, that aren't really good for anything, but I appreciate you watching. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.